Hello YouTube! In this video, I'm going to be reviewing the new Push Pull Leg program by Jeff Nippard. If you have been following the famous program reviews I've made on this channel so far, you know I've already reviewed one Push Pull Leg by Jeff. So you might be asking yourself, why do I do this one? Well, the reason is because the first review of the program I did was uh, sort of negative, and that was because I really didn't like his program at all, and I explained why. And therefore, I find it interesting to go back and see if maybe the new methods that is going to apply in this new training regimen is going to be more suitable to what I believe to be best for hypertrophy. So let's get into that review today. Before I do so, however, I need to say something because I've seen a lot of people who don't quite get it and I understand why. My methodology when I do these reviews is I don't watch the video. And I don't study the program beforehand. And you might be thinking, okay, what is the logic behind that? You go in with no knowledge, you're going to make mistakes. That is the point. I'm trying to put myself into the shoes of someone who hasn't had any extra information about the program. And the reason why I do that is because this is the organic state of discovery for most people when they get on a program from YouTube Fitness, Reddit, or 4 -chan. At no point will you go and read a book or go and listen to a 25 minute video about the program. Most people don't do that. And on top of that, there is such a thing as so certain regimens that take a life of their own and they become disassociated, that's a complicated word to say, from the platform that created them. And therefore, they just exist as a program. And so all of the information that we think needs to be consumed before the person runs the program disappears. This doesn't mean that the program now becomes hermetic. It is still supposed to be understandable because a program can stand on its own two legs. And therefore, when I do a review, I just read the program. I don't want to have to listen to you explain why I should be able to dec decipher the information by myself. Keep in mind also that I have a much greater understanding of programmation than most people. And therefore, if I fuck up and I make mistakes reading the program, most likely a novice is also going to have that problem. So it's on the creators to actually do a proper job of crafting a proper program. And then there's also the issue, of course, of programs that require to read a full book to understand them. I've seen people tell me that you need to read the Starling Strength book to understand the program. That's nonsense. The problem is bad to start with. Don't try to justify it by saying, oh, you need to learn a fifth language to be able to know what it means. No, the program is bad. That's it. A good program is a good program regardless of the information surrounding it. And on top of that, you also have the issue, and that's not really the content creator's fault, of programs that get modified, usually all programs are like this, where they have 55 versions on the internet. That's a different thing. But for today, there's no such thing because the program is brand new. So there's no excuse. We're going to look at the program and say if it's a good or a bad push-pull leg program because the push-pull leg template for hypertrophy is fine. It's a good program. And most people will be running that program to gain muscle and not strength. So I'm going to be reviewing it from that mindset, not strength. All right, so first off, the first thing I notice is that it's not a push-pull leg. It's a leg push-pull. And that is already good. That's already a good sign because the worst iteration of push-pull leg is push-pull leg. Because you push, so you do upper body, and then you pull, so you do lower body, unless you're an idiot and you just do that pull-downs, and then you do legs, which is lower body again. So it's the synchronicity is just bad. It, it just doesn't go together well. Instead, something like a leg push-pull or something like a pull push-leg is much more suitable, especially if you can intercalate a, a rest day in between. So that's already a good sign. When we look at the rest of the template, the way it's articulated, you have a day, uh, you have a, a, a second version of each day, meaning that you have two leg days, you have two push days, you have two pull days. This means that there is more variation, there is a lesser risk of overuse injury, and it also means that the program is more suitable for people who are more advanced because novices don't need that much variety. 
This is a topic I'm going to be expanding on next Wednesday when I make a video about minimalism. But this is an anti-minimalistic template because there are six days. Six days means twice as many exercises if the variations fall into the line of specificity. If they don't, that's also going to be a problem because it's going to mean that the neurological adaptation are not going to be fed constantly, but we're going to see. This is just an assumption on my part because, as I said, I haven't read the program yet. I'm going to discover it with you guys. So that's cool. Six days of push-pull leg, a day one, a day two for each day. Okay, the setting is pretty good. I like, I like where this is starting already. Let's get into now the meat and potatoes, the exercise selection. For one day, the leg day that starts and opens the program, you start with squats. My personal bias makes it so that I always prefer to start with upper movements. That's just me. It's not a programming principle. It's just that I've always felt that I am not ready when I just start my week to lift heavy stuff with my legs. I need a preparation day, which is an upper day. If you don't need that, you're going to be just fine. So the first set and exercise is going to be squats. And you're going to do three sets of four reps. That's excellent. Okay, you open with a, a heavy knee flexion, it's a squat. You could replace the squat by any type of squat variation if you wanted. And he has you do it in the 80% of your one rep max. So that's good volume and good intensity. I have nothing to say about that. All right, of course, there's my uh, evolving rep range bias, what I would always like you to do evolving rep ranges. But if you don't want to, don't. Then you do Romanian deadlift, three sets of 10. Okay. Now we're talking, I've always said that to me, a good, almost perfect leg day will have squats followed by remaining deadlifts. You get your knee flexion in, you get your hip hinge in, your Gucci, like you've already covered 80% of your bases. This is something to keep in mind. Is it going to devolve into too much work afterwards? We will see. So the first two strength work iterations of the program are already extremely good, which means that I am going to give Jeff a pass because he named the program the smartest push-pull-leg routine. It's pretty smart so far, all right? It's, it's fine. Okay, after that, it is directly followed by a single leg press. Okay, additional knee flexion. It's three sets of 15, so it's nothing crazy in terms of volume. I'm not opposed to that. Extra leg work. It's not going to tax the lower back. Okay, then eccentric leg extension. Hmm. This is when we're starting to get into the territory of potential junk volume and additional work that won't do much. It's not going to be super taxing at the end of the day, but it might just not be time efficient at all. So three sets of 10 to 12, so nothing insane. After that, seated leg curls, another hamstring movement. This one is going to be more focused on the stretch. You can really squeeze. All right, that's still fine. If there were another leg exercise after that, I would tell you that's too much that overkill. But after this, you do calf raises. So he stopped right at the brink. He stopped at the point where I was going to say, hmm, no, that's too much now. But that's okay now. The only thing I would say is it really is a waste of time to do these uh, leg movements and then just sit on your ass and do nothing. So you could really be supersetting these with a number of movements like neck, forearm movements, shrugs. You could be doing any level of small muscle group work in between the sets so that you don't actually waste your time. Like, let's say you have a muscle that is lacking, maybe throw some work in there. Of course, it's going to go against the idea of the template of the push to leg, but this is the reason why also templates tend to become restrictive at some point. So I understand why he didn't do that. I'm just saying, if you want to maximize, you can. The issue is that uh, supersetting these movements is going to be complicated. You could, however, superset the single leg press with the uh, seated leg curl and then superset the eccentric leg extension with what follows, which is standing calf raises. That is a perfectly fine way to superset, and I would actually encourage you to do that. Again, to not waste time. There is no point in just waiting in between two sets. It's not like you're going to get any hypertrophic benefits from it. Then you do your standing calf raise. Again, as I said, three sets of 10 to 12, excellent prep range, calf work, only one calf exercise, we'll see if there's more in the rest of the program, but that's already more than most programs. Then he has you do decline crunches, an exercise that I love, long lever planks, an exercise that is good too, so something that is going to focus more on the stretch of the abs, something that is going to focus more on the bracing of the abs, 
Ab work, isolation work at the end of the program is necessary, so that's good. And apparently, with the way it's written, I do believe you superset these, which is fine also. It's not uh, the end of the, the word that you have to superset ab exercises. And I believe that the way he marks it makes it so that, yes, I am right. So I'm going to keep an eye on this. Right? That's a marking of the program. A star means superset. Okay. Day one for legs is a good day. Like, I have nothing to say much about that. I'm not going to correct anything because to me, that is a good day. Push day one. Okay. So this is day two of the program, but this is push one. You start with the bench press. Three sets of eight. Okay. So again, a lot of volume, right? But still a decent intensity, right? Uh, the issue with uh, three sets of eight is that there's going to be a lot more sandbagging involved than three sets of four, just because of the amount of additional reps. So this is when you start wondering if maybe an evolving rep range would actually be suitable here. But still, you start with an horizontal press. Then you do a machine shoulder press, so which means that you could replace the shoulder press by, by any type of press in reality. Three sets of 12, so the hypertrophy rep range, quote unquote. You know, horizontal press, vertical press, I've always said two for upper body days, that's the way to go. Then you do dips, three sets of 12 to 15, okay. So now you're doing an additional horizontal press. Is that a bad thing? No, not necessarily, right? Because you're still within the baseline of recovery. It's not like three sets of hate have completely destroyed your shoulders and chest. And it's in a higher rep range, so it's not super intense. You can still get it done. But, same logic as with the legs, if there were another horizontal press, it would be too much. You'll see that there is none. Because after that, you do eccentric scroll crushers, three sets of 8 to 10, long head of the tricep hook, extremely good. Then you do Egyptian lateral raise, which I love for the shoulders, three sets of 12 plus myo reps. No problem of myo reps in that uh, type of uh, setting. It works fine. Then cable tricep kickbacks, three sets of 20 to 30. So junk volume for the tricep at the end, but just to get a pump, to get a feel, your triceps are already tired at this point, so it's not like it's costing you much to do that in terms of recovery. That's great. Day two, and I also have nothing to say. This is, to me, already a better program based on those two days than his previous push-pull leg. I'm really, I mean, I'm not going to say I'm impressed. Jeff does create quality content, so it would make sense that his programs would also be good. This is a good day, as I said. Uh, I wouldn't change anything. Maybe superset the score crushers with the dips because it doesn't cost anything. Superset the lateral raise with the kickbacks because it doesn't cost anything. The only problem I would have, and we're going to see that it might have a, a, an impact on the rest of the program, is there is a stalking lack of bicep movements so far. Meaning that I don't see enough bicep movements. And you could tell me, well, it's a push day. Yeah, but you could still do biceps. I mean, it, does, it wouldn't cost anything. You could do chin-ups on that day. Again, it goes outside of the parameters of the push-pull leg. But you're already doing a leg push-pull. You're already cheating, quote-unquote. You're playing with the rules. Why not push the idea forward, right? So on top of that, it would add upper back work. Because keep in mind that leg, uh, leg day one had none. Push day one had none. The upper back is glutinous in terms of volume. You can really do a ton of pull-ups, a ton of uh, back-assisted rows, and not really feel it. And you'll need that to grow your back if you want a humongous upper back. So, another maybe idea to throw in. You could do some extra upper back work in there. That wouldn't hurt. A little bit more bicep work. All right. Pull day one, which is day three of the program. You start with deadlifts. Three sets of three. Money. Three sets of three for deadlift is money. One set of five is money. Uh, three sets of five starts to be a little bit too much volume. At five, five by five as well. Um, three by three I love, personally. So, excellent. You start with a deadlift. Don't neglect the deadlift as a bodybuilder. It's extremely important that you do so. It's going to just put mass on everything, right? The posterior chain is going to be covered. It works the, the core, etc. After that, axe squats. Good idea. When you follow a deadlift with a knee flexion, you want something that deloads the lower back. is not going to be too taxing on the lumbar spine. The hack squat does just that. Three sets of 10 to 12. Good volume for the glutes and the, the quads. It's an additional knee flexion that carries over to the squat. Excellent. After that, single leg hip thrust. Two sets of 15. You know what? 30 reps of extra glute work that is going to also be beneficiate the arm strength. You can't say no to that. 
it's great. It's not overkill because the deadlift wasn't overkill. That's the thing with programmation as well. If the deadlift had been in a 5x5, five five, I would have told you that this might be overkill, but this time it isn't. And then you pay... Uh, so this is then followed by a superset of Nordic, ham, uh, Nordic hamstring curls, sorry, for two sets of 10 to 12, and prisoner back extension, two sets of 10 to 12. Okay, so he's basically having you go through like a mini circuit of lower back and hamstring work. I would say... This is my opinion, that this would be better suited in a rotation. If you make that superset enter rotation with the single leg hip thrust, and instead of doing only two sets of the hip thrust, you would do four. So, so this is, we're getting a little bit into the complicated depth of programming. This is day one of pull. For day one of pull, on your week one of pull one, okay, not the week one of the program, the week one of pull one, uh, uh, yes, you would do, sorry, what did I just do? Okay, I'm sorry, as I understood, I, f I fucked up. So, I just skipped the pull one day. So, what I just said was for leg day. Okay, sorry, I just, uh, I just wasn't paying uh, close enough attention. It still works. So, for the, so that's legs two. For week one of legs two, you would do single leg hip thrust for four sets of 15. 10 to 15 would be better. And then, the, uh, the second time you do the legs two, you would replace that by the armor curl, back extensions for two sets, superset it. And then you end the day with single leg calf phrase, three sets of eight to ten, and weighted L sit hold for three sets just for time. Okay, abs, calves, nothing to say. Let me correct one thing here, and let me say it also just for the sake of being honest. Me not being able to read properly doesn't constitute a mistake on the, the, the program's uh, back. It's not the program's fault that I just skipped a day. So let's get back to pull day, okay? But the reason why I had made that mistake is one, because I'm an idiot, and two, because this looked like a perfect pull day. Like it was the perfect uh, complement of leg day one. So let's see what pull day one has to offer for us. You start with weighted pull-ups, three sets of six, okay? So you start with a vertical pull. I love vertical pulls, I love weighted pull-ups, but I don't like them as strength work, especially on a pull day. It's the reason why I just said that the leg day two was a better uh, choice, is because it opened with a deadlift. I would want your pull days to open with a hip hinge. Romanian deadlift, any type of pull from the floor, it makes a ton more sense because we are going to see that this day in particular is all a bit light. You follow the weighted pull-ups with seated cable rows, three sets of 10 to 12. Then cable pullovers, three sets of 15 to 20. I have noticed something, and you tell me if I'm wrong. I have noticed a certain amount of focus, and I would even say obsession, with lat isolation movements in Jeff's programs. It's something that I've always seen. He tends to just slap a ton of exercises for these body parts. And I do think that this is a problem because you end up doing three lats exercises back to back to back. That's too much. Spread them up, right? This to me is the first bad day of the program because there's no leg work. That's a problem. Let me just take a glance. Yeah. On none of his pull days does he offer leg work. So out of the six days of the pull, of the legs push pull, you're only going to train your legs twice out of six days. I understand a lot of people look at push pull leg and they think, hmm, three out of th th uh, two out of three days you train your legs, isn't that creating an imbalance? Well, maybe it does, but the issue is that if you cut that and you just say, okay, only one day then, well, guess what? Now there's another type of imbalance. You don't train your legs enough. So that's an issue. It's the reason why my brain immediately thought that that day was the pull day. It's because in reality, if you took the leg day two and you replaced it with the pull day one, meaning that you would switch and just take the content of leg day two and, and just present it as pull day one, it would be good. So here, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to make a mix. I'm going to take the two and I'm going to just create a mixture of the two. So the good version of pull day one, in my opinion, would be you start with the deadlift, as I said, you follow that with the weighted pull-ups, 
then you uh, continue with the hack squats, and then you can just do a quick superset of some cable rows, some uh, some hip thrust or some uh, armstring curl movement or whatever isolation for the, the back of the leg, some calf hook and some abs. You finish with a giant set, so you have your three big exercises of deadlift, to the pull ups, and and uh, hack squats, and then you just wrap it up for your last day of that session of the three of the block of three days, and you go home. And most likely you're going to have to rest day afterwards, so it's fine to just push the bill a bit with the giant set in terms of volume, and that would be better because to me that pull day one is sort of like a it, it's an afterthought, right? It's it's nothing interesting or major that is happening on that day. And that is a problem. I do see that there's some hammer cheat curl. As I said, you could have put these on the push day. It doesn't justify having a pull there. It's really so empty of any meaningful movements. And he also has you do inclined dumbbell curls. I don't like that movement at all. Just do chin-ups on a different day. Do chin-ups on leg day one and you would be covered. So here I'm at a crossroads because I just canceled a day. Like the pull day one, I don't like at all. I would much rather you do the leg day two. It's a problem. Why? Because if I do that, it means that the next time you come into the gym, you're going to do legs again. But if I just reuse the template he gave of legs day one, you're going to run into an issue because now you're not going to be recovered to do your squat. I can guarantee you that. So that's going to be a problem, which is why even just intercalling a day of rest in between the two will not work in this case. So now let's try and brainstorm right on the spot to see what type of solution we could offer. We now have what I believe to be a good pull day one. We want to be able to still be fresh when we do the legs. Why don't we just say, okay, after that pull day one that had us do deadlifts and hack squats and weighted pull-ups, why don't I take a rest day and then the next day, instead of doing legs, I come in and I'm just going to be doing some accessory exercises. And in that case, you can reuse pull day one. On that day, you could be doing your cable pullovers. You can be doing your extra arm day. The only problem is that this would sort of throw off the routine. So in a sense, I understand why his pull day one is so light. It's because he he's banking all of his coins on the leg days. The leg days are the heavy eaters of the program. So now it makes a ton more sense. That being said, I still don't like it, as I said. I've always found that it's best to split volume up in terms of frequency and train legs more often instead of just crushing them completely. So that's my two cents. You could follow his program or you could follow my advice. If you follow my advice, as I said, you're going to have to pay close attention to the recovery. The solution I would have given would be very simple is either you do what I just said or you take two days off with one that is active recovery where you just work on the small muscle groups or you just completely erase his leg day two because it became the pull day one and you redo leg day one the next time you come into the gym but instead of doing squats as your opener you're going to be doing pose squats with a lower intensity and more reps in a six to ten rep range that way the lower back is not as taxed and then you can just do the rest of the program, right? Because the problem was that you wouldn't be able to perform in a three sets of four rep range on the squat. But now I just fixed that issue. You do your post squats for 10 reps, then you do your remaining deadlifts. Here, fixed is going to be more volume, less intensity, easier to perform, even though you did heavy deadlifts two days before or one day before. That is going to be up to you, but that's what I offer as a solution. Now, we took care of uh, poor day one and... Uh, we're now left with legs uh, two, right? I'm still going to try and go back to his format because I'm reviewing his program, not mine. So for legs day two, as I said, I've already reviewed it. He has you do a deadlift focus day. So in reality, if you look at his program, there is a strong, strong focus on the arm string, which is good. You want a lot of arm string volume. But leg day one was more, had more knee flexion emphasis and leg day two has more arm string emphasis. That is okay. It's a good idea. It's a good way to program. So the leg day two was reviewed. To me, it is a good day. It's also a great day. For now, the only day I didn't like was pull day one. Now let's look at push day two, which is the fifth day of the program if you're still following. You start with overhead press. 
So there is a switch of focus. This time you start with a vertical press. Excellent idea. Four sets of four, a little bit low in volume for the vertical press, but it's not the end of the world. It's high, it's high intensity at 80%, so it's fine. Then you follow that with a cross grip bench press. Excellent, a bench variation. It's your, it's your horizontal press. You work the chest with more triceps. Very good movement. Three sets of 10, my favorite rep range for that movement, so that aligns. Then cable crossover, three sets of 10 to 12 plus a drop set, extra chest volume, more focus on the upper chest depending on the way you do it, good. Overhead tricep extension, three sets of 10 to 12. More emphasis on the long head. The long head is often forgotten in bodybuilding programs. This time it's given the love it deserves. I like it. Excellent. Then lateral raise in the format of a 21, which doesn't doesn't it doesn't not work right let's do a double negative here it's fine for the lateral raise i would i would believe that this would actually help with the growth of your dots and then you do neck flexion so this is the first uh, iteration of neck work and it's the first and only iteration of neck work which means that you really should be doing neck work somewhere else in the program it doesn't cost anything or do it at home once every six days is not enough so that's a good day Again, excellent day. I mean, he's always been really good with push days. I think uh, even though he's actually also strong on leg movements, he has a quirk for push days. So his push days, I wouldn't touch anything. I would just say doesn't cost anything to superset the cable crossover with the overhead tricep extension. Does it cost anything to superset the lateral raise with the neck flexion? Now, let's get to my nemesis, or rather his nemesis, the pull day. Pull day two. I've already squashed pull day one and told you to take it out of the program because it's a waste of time. Will I do the same with pull day two? The answer is yes. Because he has you do a grip lap, a omni grip lat pull down, chest supported rows. At least this time it's only two lat movements, but again, it's quote unquote isolation movements for the lats. I would prefer to open with the chest supported row, maybe just normal rows. Because again, the posterior chain and the legs get no work on those poor days. So a good solution would be to open with actual standard rows where you have to support yourself with your actual legs and back. Then do your, do, you do your lat pull down because it's going to be an horizontal pull and a vertical pull. Then rope face pull, real dart work, good. Incline dumbbell shrug. I've never done that lift, but some trap work. It is the only iteration of trap work and isolation, by the way. Keep in mind that you could be doing shrugs and superset shrugs anywhere. It doesn't cost anything. Then he has you do an optional, and this is where it's getting interesting. He has you do an optional set of reverse spec deck or pronated supinated curl. I do think that these are optional and they should remain optional because they work muscle groups that have already been worked besides the curls. Like, I don't see why the curls are optional here. It's the only movement for the bicep on that day and if you look at the entirety of the program these are few and far between you don't want to make them optional you really want to make them mandatory because if not you're going to end up with people with massive triceps and no biceps and that's not a good look therefore you need to work your biceps more i also noticed that there is no high intensity movement for the biceps and to me that's a shame just do some easy bar curls for three sets or four sets Three to five, three to six reps with proper form and you're going to see your biceps blow up. They need intensity too. You can't just work them with, uh, with uh, low weight. So now we are, we are at a crossroads, right? Because as I said, I perfectly understand why he has you do pull days that are so light with no heavy pulls from the floor. It's because the leg days are monstrous. But as I said, I do believe it's a mistake. Meaning that you would have the ability to train legs four times out of the six days on this program, if you do it smartly, if you do it the way I actually, uh, actually advise you to. And I've already explained how. For that pull day two, you could start with something like a deficit deadlift or stiff leg deadlift. You don't have to pull heavy from the floor again. You can just do a variation, but at least you get some leg volume in, a strength work, and that opens the day. And after that, you can do something else. As I said, you could also open with a row that serves the same purpose. And then the rest of the day makes a ton more sense. Then it's justified. But as it is right now, it's a lot of just fluff. And that's not going to get you very big, in my opinion. You're just wasting tonnage. 
So apply the same logic I uh, showed you previously on poor day one and do the same for this one. I actually add some level of hip hinge and then think about the impact it's going to have to be to, to have on you when you have to go in and do the leg day again one or two days afterwards. In terms of the template and the way you should articulate it, I don't know what he says because again, it's my opinion on his program, but it would make a ton more sense to take your rest day after the pull day and not after the push day. So it would be three days rest, three days rest, three days rest, etc. And that concludes my review of this program. A program that I must say is extremely good and would be perfect if, we, if it were, <coughs> sorry, if it weren't for the pull days. But again, I understand why he did it that way. I just think it's a waste. In terms of template and application, it's a good application of a push-pull leg. It is a good push-pull leg program. It is suitable for intermediates, in my opinion. Uh, for novices, it's going to be too much volume. The variations or, and rotations are just not needed. You can just remain minimalistic. In which case, by the way, you could also do uh, a simple picking selection and exercise and do his, uh, his leg day, you could do, if you're a novice, his leg day one, his push day one, and his, and what I created as his pull day one, with a, a rotation of the push. So the only day that would change is the push. You would do push one, push two, but the rest you could remain the same. Like if you're not going to go crazy because there's not enough change, his leg day one is solid. And then you take his leg day two as your pull day one, and that's it, you're, you're covered, you're set. That's, that would actually make a superior version of a push-pull leg for people who don't need to have mirror days, meaning they don't need a day one and a day two. For those of you who need the six days, again, listen to this video, take the advice I gave you and apply it. But if you want a good program to run, a good push-pull leg, I do believe that this is fairly solid. So I'm going to leave you with that. If you have any questions about the program, things you need to understand, let me know if you have concepts you didn't understand. Check the hypertrophy series and have a good day.